The good news, smoking. In China, 500,000 children have been told to heckle cigarette smokers and make them quit for life. Heckles include smoking reduces your fitness, you foul the air, honorable comrade, and crush his cancerous throat with the tank. You know where this will lead? Millions of Chinese workers slipping over the border into Hong Kong for a quick fag. But China is desperate to stamp out smoking. It affects the resale value of the lungs they rip out of executed criminals. In historic news, the first Australian-born space shuttle commander blasted off from Kennedy Space Centre a few days ago. NASA says everything has gone according to plan. The proud Aussie is up the back of the space shuttle, getting pissed, wanting to stop every 20 minutes for a toilet break, and demanding, are we there yet? Are we there yet? And in news from Canberra, the coalition wants to spend 17 million to boost security for government ministers. It can't hurt. At the moment, all you need to get past Howard's minders are a blue rinse and a few verses of God Save the Queen. After the Super League debacle, Kerry Packer is suing Rupert Murdoch over the rights to 20th century Fox TV programs. Packer and Murdoch are spending so much money in the courts, they should just buy them. Then we could have round-the-clock trials with jelly-wrestling judges, topless juries and scratch-and-win verdict cards. In Alabama, homeless people are being shipped out of town before the start of Olympic qualifying rounds. They get $12 and a bus ticket and have to leave before July 20th. It's like an SAS training exercise for hobos. You're dumped 50 miles from civilization with nothing but the garbage bag you're wearing and a shopping trolley. If you manage to get back, you get your welfare check. In some exciting news, though, the three tenors are coming to Australia. Careeris, Domingo and Pavarotti will perform at the MCG in March next year. But Luciano is the crowd pleaser. He has a wonderful voice. He's witty and charming. And you can see him from the back row without the aid of a video screen. <laughs> if you want a less expensive seat, D reserve tickets are only $102. But you will be sitting in Bendigo. <laughs> but a warning, avoid the front row at all costs. Pavarotti has started stage diving. <laughs> and that's good news. Welcome to Good News Week, the program that isn't afraid to tell you that Craig McLaughlin's new show is on Channel 7 right now. <laughs> Leading our first team is always a man who oozes so much charm, oozes so much charisma, we have to wash the furniture when he leaves. Mikey Robbins. <laughs> and with Mikey, the actor who loves a party so much we had to promise her a bowl of twisties and some warm white wine before she'd come back, Kate Fisher. And a writer who's done something we'd all like to do. Put the fear of God into Bromham Bishop. Bob Ellis. <laughs> Special guest captain of Team Two this week, undisputed queen of the handy hint, the gorgeous and talented Amanda Keller. <laughs> be afraid, be very afraid. One of Australia's best stand-up comedians, Peter Burner. <laughs> And an actor with the difficult job of making schoolboys think about Shakespeare, Julia Zamiro. <laughs> Round one, looking at some recent big news. Mikey, Kate and Bob, what's the story here? You okay? Uh, yes. Ah, British Embassy. There's funny No, James Bond. <laughs> yes. Oh! <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that's, that's Boris proving he's sober enough to drive another Russian. <laughs> the ancient Russian art of Boris dancing. Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, that's uh, a bunch of uh, Brits were thrown out of Moscow, accused of being spies. This mm. is true. This is true. We hope. We pray. Yes. For a bonus point, can you sing Goldfinger? Goldfinger. He's a man, a man with a Midas touch. A Midas touch. <laughs> I should, but I think I'm going to give you three for that. Oh. I'm from Newcastle. I know a drag act when I see one. Yes. Russia has accused Britain of running a spy ring out of its Moscow embassy and is going to expel nine dodgy diplomats, the worst espionage scandal since the Cold War. But British intelligence isn't spying on the Russian Secret Service. They're just trying to track down some old chums from Cambridge. 
<laughs> Nowadays, the closest thing the Russians have to a state secret is the combination on Yeltsin's bar fridge. <laughs> Amanda, Peter and Julia, Correct. putting your current affairs knowledge to the test. Let me see. That's a phone. It's someone on the phone. It's Ooh. Madonna in concert. <laughs> it's one of those porno lines. <laughs> Nipple clips. Nipple clips. <laughs> That's a funny-looking nipple. Oh, well, some it? of us have a disadvantage, all right, because it's a bit smaller. Come on, Peter, you read the place. It's, it's the privatisation of 0055 numbers. <laughs> Actually, my, my favourite is 0055 sex with a premature ejaculator. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> someone's eavesdropping on people's conversations and that's just outrageous oh, especially much. in this country in this country you are right and for a bonus point can you sing ring ring <laughs> ring, ring ring why don't, don't you give me a call do, 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 do. It's like, it's like Muriel's wedding on bad acid, isn't it? <laughs> Don't give us negative points. No, 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 no. Uh, three and points we for you as well. Three! An independent government audit found that Telstra was constantly infringing privacy, mostly by monitoring and recording customer calls. Customers originally became suspicious when Telstra introduced the family and friends and total strangers plan. <laughs> Moving right along, Mikey, Kate and Bob, your clues to strange but true are... A very hot day. <laughs> oh, yes, no expense spared at the ABC. <laughs> Bad day at class. That's been hanging around since certain women. <laughs> a human brain. Oh. And I won't tell you which panellist that comes from. <laughs> what, what, what time is Jeff? <laughs> and a lump of bread dough. It looks like a brain. Mm. Uh, when does Mr. Kennett want this back? <laughs> And Amanda, Peter and Julia, you get a love potion. Thank you very much. Oh, lovely. A pair of pliers. <laughs> or nipple clamps. <laughs> and a pair of sparkling eyes. Sparkling eyes. Mm. Okay. Teams will tell their strange but true stories at the end, hopefully without too much bad theatre. To start round two, a game we call The Lousy Years of Hollywood. Bob, what recent movie is US critic Janet Maslin reviewing here. It bludgeons the audience with such tireless crude thoughts that when a group of chimps get loose in the girls dressing room and all they do is defecate, the film enjoys a rare moment of good taste. <laughs> Just been released on video, makes basic instinct look like Why an episode no? of the Golden no? Girls. Othello. <laughs> Going for another shot? Team Mikey? Um, it's, 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 it, yes, it, I'm going to have to give it to Burner if you don't get it. <laughs> Look, just, Howard, just the yeah, put him out of his misery, please. Okay. Give it to him. Pete. I reckon it's Showgirl. You are right. <laughs> Does Burner get a point for knowing Showgirl? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I get a point for sitting through the whole of it. <laughs> and again with friends. After hearing the monkeys had soiled the dressing room, the Beatles said they did it first. <laughs> Julia, can you identify this piece of oh, fine she cinema? I'll try. An appallingly violent, classically reactionary American epic film about a semi fictitious thug. Nixon. <laughs> Forrest Gump. <laughs> no, 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 you've got to be sensible. An appallingly violent Tarantino. Classically reactionary. You're actually thinking, aren't you, no, Peter? I think <laughs> it could be dangerous. Couldn't it, couldn't it be the, the latest on, casino business? Casino! Casino! casino. casino. Oh. Robert De Niro, which rhymes with Samira. We had this conversation. <laughs> Robert, Wait, shut yes. up. Robert De Niro. I think it's a Robert De Niro one because he's a clammy, clammy, fictitious thug. He's very clammy. So the final answer is the film is called casino. Robert De Niro. Casino. Not casino. Thank you. I'm De Niro Casino. I've broken the eye. You're wrong. Aww. Wait, 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 wait. There's your answer. What's it uh, Is it City Hall? No. no. Braveheart. Braveheart it is. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I read it on the monitor. <laughs> 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 Minus. Minus. Well, just like, just like in the days of my youth, one for getting the answer right and one for being honest. I reckon an extra one for reading, too. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, 
Second game in this round is that old favourite, Missing Persons. Mikey, who's mixing the drinks here? Think about it, think it, look at the head. The head's a bit of a giveaway. <laughs> is it, um... Come on. It, is, is it possibly Greg Norman? Shut up. <laughs> I think I might have to toss it over to Pete again. Molly Melville at, at his new bar in Bali. All right. Yes. Let's hear it. It is Molly Meldrum. Molly reckons his Bangkok bar captures the spirit of Sydney's Mardi Gras. Yeah. It even has a group of Christians in the corner praying for rain. <laughs> Amanda, your missing person is in famous company. Mm. 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 Is it someone who was a birthday boy recently and someone who recently sued his father for yes. slapping yes. him when yes. he had to tidy his Absolutely. bedroom? Absolutely. I think you're I right think I'm on the right It's Alexander Downer. It is. <laughs> His bedroom is so untidy, and I'm not going to tell you how I know that. I think that that is Macaulay Culkin, my favourite. You are right. <laughs> for most people, the appearance of pubic hair means nothing more than feeling self-conscious for a few weeks. For Mac, it meant the end of a huge movie career and his friendship with Michael Jackson. Oh, yes. <laughs> this day to night is the last one-on-one -on -one game. We're looking for a famous event that occurred on this day. Kate, I can tell you the year was 1994. Paul Keating thought all his Christmases had come at once and another little politician made this statement. I would hope to be asked to do something uh, important. Look, I will do, I'll do whatever I'm asked to do. I'm a very agreeable bloke. <laughs> do I have to say who that is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what the hell? Go out on a limb. Identify him. That's um, John Howard. Yep, we're actually looking for the event that occurred. Oh. Um. The Liberal Party karaoke playoff. You're on your own, honey. <laughs> oh, thanks, team. Um. Ellis, you. The leadership, uh, the leadership uh, uh, when he took it from down, surely. Uh, yeah. Oh, the... But it had Chinese things, in the... were they in a Chinese restaurant at the time? <laughs> I think they've just said, please, please do. These boots were made for walk and carry. <laughs> <laughs> he's going, all yes. right, all right, yeah. Margaret, come on, Nancy, hit it. So I think he's going to do a, a, a version of a karaoke number. Because we can't take all we'll night with this one, I'm going to put it on hold. I don't Thank think you. anyone's going to get it, so let's just go on. Houston was out, Downer was in, and by the looks of things, Howard had had one or two or 17. <laughs> It was that classic takeover. Alexander Downer as Liberal leader was like a breath of fresh air. Just a hint of Glen Twenty. <laughs> Voters hadn't laughed so much since Bob Hawke's No Child Will Live in Poverty speech. Peter, this day tonight takes you to Switzerland. 1956. It was the premiere of this particular event. It brought Europe together and almost 20 years later would start these four kids on the road to stardom. I know what it is! I know what it is! Throw it away! I can tell you, you don't have to show me anymore. That's a bad head, isn't it? Look! I know what it is. Bucks me? No. no that's, <laughs> that was, of course, ABBA. And uh, the competition was uh, Eurovision. Yes, and, yes. Uh, and of course, not many people know that she was actually pregnant for Anna with the baby. Was with she the... doing that then? Yeah, well, not then, because that's uh, actually not the right taping, I think. In the original one, with child. Really? Singing, moving. It is the Eurovision hey! Song Contest. <laughs> The first ever Eurovision Song Contest was held on this day in Lugano, Switzerland. Elevators would never be the same. Since 1956, lots of European countries have channeled their national pride into the contest as a substitute for war. The toll in human misery is just as great, but there's less property damage. Checking the scores, and Mikey, Kate and Bob are hitting the high notes on seven points. While Amanda, Peter and Julia are nicely off-key on... Six points. <laughs> Bonus round now, face value. Teams are shown a disguised celebrity. A correct guess straight away will earn four points. If not, we'll remove one piece of the disguise. This time, three points are up for grabs. Okay, Kate, any ideas on this memorable face? <laughs> Apparently, if you squint, it's easier. Actually, I think it's some... Um... It's, is, it, is it Greg Matthews? Oh, that's anybody, good Anybody, anybody on that team. That's ah. good. Greg Matthews? Throw it in. Vacant expression? No, we're going to throw it over here. 
Hey, mm, bacon mm, in print. That's, good it's, call. Um, good call. It looks a lot like Stalin, but it's makeup. It's something with that mm. mouth. Um, Anybody um, on that um, team? Quick, quick, quick. Greg Hi. Matthews. I have to go. Greg Matthews. Do you too. No, you're wrong. Let's oh, take away not. one piece of the disguise. Yes. Yeah, okay. Oh. Oh. Einstein. Einstein. No, not How come I'd know that face? We're stumped. Okay, let's throw it over to oh, Einstein. Don't Einstein. It's, it's Albert Einstein. Oh, shut up. It's, <laughs> it's, not. Einstein. it's very similar to the classic Albert Einstein snap, but it's it is not, not Albert no, Einstein. No, no, no. Okay, let's take an, away another piece of disguise. Who we got here? Oh. It's um, it's. Um, come on, come on. It, 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 it's Agassiz. Charles Manson. Charles Manson, you are Charles right. Yes, it's Charles Manson. That's actually his passport photo. <laughs> the swastika he carved into his forehead is, of course, the reverse of the Hindu symbol of life. It's negative for everyone else when they look at him, but when Charlie looks in the mirror, it's really positive. <laughs> Half of the bonus round, Mikey, Kate and Bob are going crazy on a massive seven points. <laughs> while Amanda, Peter and Julia helter-skelter oh, on seven yeah. points. Yeah. Round four, odd one out. Mikey, Kate, and Bob. Who's the thorn among these roses? Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Cute. Gladiator Taipan. Yep. Science whiz Karl <laughs> Kruselnitsky. Yep. And the Pope, Karol Walitja. <laughs> oh, his oh, name is not Karol Walitja. Yeah, it is actually, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, well, Dr. Karl. Um, Carl is, a, is a, a Polish extraction and as such has a, a, a constant and heavy surname, shall we say. Mm. <laughs> Schwarzenegger is the only person who's not a Pole. That's right. I, I, I don't know, is Taipan Polish? <laughs> <laughs> I've got one of you. Is Taipan the only one who actually can't spell his name? You are right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Like all gladiators, Taipan spends at least five hours a day working out. Working out the toaster, working out the VCR, working out which shoe goes on the left foot, which shoe goes on the right. His original gladiator name was going to be Death Adder, but he's not that good at adding. <laughs> Amanda, Peter, Julia, spot the party crasher here. Oh. Kate Fisher. Kate. I know her. The Big Banana. There's two guys. <laughs> So far, it's two great Australian monuments. <laughs> Shooters Party MP John oh. Tingle. Mm -hmm. And Uluru. Another great Australian monument. Well, mm. Kate Fisher and the Big Banana and Uluru are national Kate's treasures. Kate's got the Olgas. Yes. <laughs> and I mean that nice. No, no, they are, they are. Well, maybe you magnificent Australian icons. And then there's John Tingle. But I'm the most fabulous one there. You're the only one wearing... Well, of course. Yes, oh. but what's the answer? <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. Could it be that tour, tour groups don't visit John Tingle? No. <laughs> I will go. I think Amanda's one about, I, I, you know, national icons, Kate Monument, Banana, big monuments, Uluru and John Tingle. Go home. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're close. I'm going to give you one point. Oh. Why are we close? With just one round to go, Mikey, Kate and Bob are whinging about their rights on eight points. While Amanda, Peter and Julia paint their necks red on eight points. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget, a great answer in Strange But True could get anything up to five points. Mikey, Kate and Bob, your clues were a hot day, a lump of dough and a human brain. It was hot day. You go first. And <laughs> that's right. And it was a hot day and the... Oh, That's the dough. No. <laughs> uh, I know, I know, I know. I know. The brain fell onto the dough and it made it really hot and it morphed into a gingerbread man and he became the Prime Minister. No, you can't guess me up the gingerbread man. Those, uh, the, those, those flashing bulbs in the face really build up after a while, don't they? No, 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 no. Don't with uh, the, uh, on a hot day in November 1963, President Kennedy was shot and on his way to the uh, Bethesda Hospital in Washington, his brain went missing, this is a fact, and for the state funeral it was replaced by a lump of dough.
Yeah, good point. What yeah. about the breadboard? <laughs> Uh, no, uh, no, this was a, this was, this was a paper last week. It was an American story, because it's stupid. <laughs> stupid American woman was driving home. It was a bloody hot day. And, and yeah, there was a dough in the back seat of it. She had, like, you know, you know, Americans love that dough mix stuff, that, like instant cake stuff in the tins. Mm. Yeah, sick people, wrong, mm. yeah. <laughs> mm, just not again. Mm. That's good. <laughs> and sun's beating down and... Uh, Stop the, miming. Beating down. <laughs> And uh, I think, yeah, the canister of dough exploded in the back seat and she thought she'd been shot in the head, so she drove to hospital. <laughs> and when she got there and all she had was dough over the back of her hair. <laughs> Hence the term dough whacker. <laughs> Can that possibly be true? Three points and it is true. Oh. No. <laughs> When a lady in Arkansas asked a woman in a nearby car if she was all right, the woman said she'd just been shot in the head and she was holding her brain in. But when paramedics prized her hands off, they found a tin had exploded in the hot car and a lump of bread dough had stuck to the back of her skull. <laughs> just as well it was dough and not instant pizza. <laughs> then she would have felt sauce and chunky bits as well. There are unconfirmed reports that the woman hit it off with one of the paramedics and now has a bun in the oven. Amanda, Peter, and Julia, you had love we potion. We have love potion. We pliers. have pliers. We have um, sparkling um, eyes. No, wait. Have I you got the eyeball things? Oh, you yeah. Have the eyeball. I think <laughs> maybe these are some of. This is the memorabilia from Sydney's new Planet Hollywood. I think <laughs> <laughs> these are the pliers that Sharon Stone used to do her bikini line before that fatal. <laughs> <scene>. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, no, I think it might be um, a strange woman from Arkansas. I never felt that <laughs> yes. her eyes are gonna pop out. No, but there was something in the paper. I don't even know whether this is related. But They're a guy David was... Bowie's. <laughs> Give them back. He's got his father's eyes. That uh, apparently a guy was walking through an airport in Johannesburg, and he was pulled over by the police, and he had some human eyes in his backpack. As you do. As you do. So maybe this is something about that. Maybe. He worked for Fred Hollows. <laughs> oh, <dear>. Sorry. <laughs> and he and and of course, of course, it's always very important in all kinds of witchcraft. Love potion. To have witchcraft. a witchcraft love potion. To if you can get something extraordinary like real eyes or a pumping heart or something like that, and you can pop it in, it just lifts the the love potion. The potion. Stakes. Or maybe even the, uh, he decided that he wanted to win a girl's heart. Wanted eyes only for him. No. Ah. And got uh, someone to give him a potion. Knocked her out. Plucked out the eyes with some pliers. <laughs> I could be making this up. Help me out here, Peter. That's the, no, no, no. I think, you're, I think you're on the right track with the pliers there. The pliers sounds very much to me like some sort of Liberal Party health policy, if you will. <laughs> 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 pliers with eyes and pliers. No, I think you're on the right track there. I think a love potion's got to have human eyes in it. And I think... Everyone um, knows that. I think well, everyone knows that. I mean, Do your it. basic Margaret Fulton... <laughs> Human eye recipe thing. Great, right, let's stop it right there, please. <laughs> stop us before we talk again. <laughs> <laughs> you are right. Oh, great. Oh, 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 it's like watching a car accident. <laughs> but so much slower. From here, it's like being in a car accident. <laughs> A man in Johannesburg was arrested in a supermarket after trying to sell a pair of eyes. Forensic tests will determine if they're human. Apparently body parts are used in traditional magic potions for fertility and to bring good luck in love and business. Police were first alerted to the man by a bunch of kids standing nearby chanting, Four eyes, four eyes, four eyes. <laughs> but if the eyes are human, how is the person who lost them going to identify the thief? <laughs> a lineup isn't going to work. He would have been in the eight eyes or less lane. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be so tonight, Mikey Robbins, Kate Fisher and Bob Ellis have finished with a magical 11 points. <laughs> Too good for Amanda Keller, Peter Berner and Julia Zamiro, who finished on a very romantic 10 points. Oh. <laughs> so we say thank you. To both teams. Twelve points. I've got eighty bucks that says we got twelve points. <laughs> and a love potion. Paul. And a love, a love potion. potion. And, and nipple clamps. Let me say thank you to both teams and leave you with the good news that Women's Weekly are running a special three tenors competition that could win you an all expenses paid trip to Uluru with Placido. Yes, it's Domingo Dingo Bingo. <laughs> 
Good night. Tomorrow, Clive James talks with popular comic Victoria Wood, rising star Alan Davies, and the former wife of disgraced evangelist Jim Baker, Tammy Faye. Don't miss the Clive James Show, tomorrow night at 10.30. Coming up...